Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 8th of December 2019. And yesterday we produced two videos. Our normal gold and silver weekly update. Plus one entitled, Is it time to forget bonds? And if so, where will the funds go? Where we discussed an article written in the Financial Times Advisor publication highlighting that bonds as an investment are becoming less attractive and recommends potential investment alternatives. And we have placed links to both of these videos in the description box below. Now today we're having a brief discussion with controversially Greg, who himself has previously owned a retail establishment which amongst other things traded in gold and silver. We ask him for some buyer and seller tips and recommendations. So here goes. Greg, good morning. Good morning. Greg, a few days ago, we published a video entitled Small Bargain Gold Purchase from Local Pawn Shop, where we acquired some nine carat gold cufflinks weighing seven grams for 95 pounds, which give or take was spot price. Now in that video, and we've placed a link in the description box below for those who haven't seen it, we highlighted a method of doing a deal, preferably after Christmas, for those items that that shop has not already sold, taking the view that if they cannot sell them over the Christmas period, they will now wish to discount them heavily in order to free up capital. Now, do you agree? And what has been your experience? Because you yourself have actually run a substantial uh, size shop in which gold and silver form part of the trading experience. Indeed, for 30 years I bought scrap gold and even gold items and silver from public in alignment with the fact that I was dealing in coins, collector's coins, and some coins that people believed would be an investment. Firstly, may I give you a quick caution. If you intend to buy from a member of the public, you are not just on a bound, there are legal legalities surrounding it in different countries, that you must give them an accurate weight of the gold concerned on an approved scale. And you must also have on display a, for lack of a better word, crib sheet of gold and silver markings and hallmarks so that they can look, look up items. Uh, just as if you're going to sell them to members of the public, you must do likewise. Uh, you said that they would heavily discount. I think you overstated that. What they will do is they will take out the premium for items that they might otherwise have received and sell them as scrap. Your cufflinks that you purchased, if they didn't sell as cufflinks in the run-up to Christmas, would be unlikely to sell as cufflinks as subsequent to Christmas. Therefore, they would not have been able to charge an extra 5% or whatever for mm. it being an item. So they will just sell it at scrap value. As to the availability of material after Christmas, Lots of dealers, including the pawn shops, will be looking to free up capital for purchases that are likely to come in after the Christmas period as people receive things like credit card bills to pay. Uh, they may well decide to sell items that they no longer have a need for uh, in order to pay off bills. So the various dealers will be liberating money to be able to make the new purchases that oil the wheels of their commercial business. So it is good to establish in your area effectively a milk round uh, that you call on once a month or once a week if need be of outlets that you wish to purchase from pawn shops, some of the antique dealers, other individuals, uh, jewelers who particularly deal in repairs and just keep the milk round so that they know that you will be calling and they can 
thus be induced to put their scrap on one side for you on an increasing basis. Now, if I may sort of add to that, Greg, and uh, quite a few people are somewhat unaware of it, they wonder why would a pawnbroker sell something at scrap value when surely they must have given scrap value to the person they purchased the item from. Well, my experience of dealing with pawnbrokers is that the prices very often, not always, it depends on the financial sophistication of the customer to a large degree, actually pay considerably less than the scrap value to customers. Now, whether that's ethical or moral is another matter. The reality is they often pay quite a bit less because they know the desperation the individual is in. W would you agree with that? Oh, I'd agree totally. There are many purchasers of gold and silver who aren't um, licensed as pawnbrokers, uh, mm. but do buy from the public. I know of one instance where somebody came in whilst but somebody wishing to, waiting to buy any surplus scrap and a customer came in and said i've got these nine coins and he had nine american eagles and the purchaser behind the counter looked at them and said yeah they're nice but the best i can offer you is a hundred pounds a coin these were and gold coins were they each were the gold american gold eagles right which meant that he paid 900 pounds Mm -hmm. for something that should be nearer £10,000. Mm. So <laughs> it's not only the buyer beware, uh, but it's the vendor beware as well. Mm. However, it is all very well to overestimate. I had an instance some 30 years ago when somebody brought in a Queen Victoria, very, very scarce crown coin, silver, uh, they had phoned me up in the morning and said, did I buy coins? And I said, yes. If they brought a coin in later today, would I be interested in buying it? And I said, well, without seeing it, I can hardly tell. However, do bring it in and I will tell you your best course of action. And I will also give you a price and tell you the weight of it. And you can then make your own mind up because I wasn't a pawnbroker. So I wasn't looking to buy the item, hold it for a, a predetermined period of time so that they could buy it back plus a premium within that period of time. Mm. I was looking to buy it outright. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, shortly after lunch, a lady came into the shop and said, I'm awfully sorry, I thought I'd be here sooner. By the time I found it, I'd forgotten it was in a box. And I said, oh, what sort of box? And she said, well, it had a royal type crest on the cover and it had the date of the coin on the cover and it was leather, but it was ruined. It was covered in white blotches and mildew. So I threw that away. And when I opened the box, I was horrified by the condition of the coin. So I cleaned it. This lady i didn't tell her had done about eight thousand pounds worth of damage to the coin in cleaning it so when you find an old coin unless you know exactly what you're doing do not clean it when you find old pieces of gold or silver jewelry or artifacts do not clean them unless you are a professional and know when to clean and when not to take it in in all its disgusting glory, and point out you haven't cleaned it on purpose because the second that you clean it, you will be scratching it, however hard you try. For instance, proof coins from direct from the mint are taken out with the production by hand wearing a cloth glove so as not to get the acidity of a human skin on the coin, which will etch it. And on top of that, they are taken out on the production line before they go down the line so as to prevent them getting what is called bag marking. In other words, as the coins move along, they are marked by the adjoining coins. You won't see this without strong magnification on a brand new coin. However, this will show up possibly years later. 
Now, coming back to the purpose of the video, and that's a great tip, thank you. How can people, when dealing with people like you or porn brokers, how can they get the best deal? The only way they can really cover themselves is know the individual, know their reputation, know other people who've dealt with them and have been satisfied with their dealings. And it's also worth seeing if they are making, they're making sure that they are giving you an opportunity to see a Hallmark chart, the opportunity to see their quoted price for gold yeah. on public display. And it is always worth weighing your coin, but do it carefully. If in doubt, wear gloves, but wear a cloth glove of some sort or pick it up with cloth. Do not touch the coin and weigh it on a specialist electronic scale of some sort. It may well be worth your while taking it to a jeweler who deals in new material and asking him for a weight, an accurate weight on the, the item for insurance purposes. Pay him a couple of pounds for, for just putting yeah. it on his scale and jotting down the exact weight. Absolutely. Then go away and anyone can look up the price of gold in any reputable newspaper or on the internet. So at least you will know the ballpark you're in rather than the individual who sold his gold eagle, American eagle coins for 10% of what they were worth. When I, when I suggested get the best deal, I should have made myself more clear. I mean, from a buyer's perspective. So I want to, I want to buy gold or silver as cheaply as possible. So I come to your shop or your store or pawnbroker. How can I get that bargain? What do I need to do? Carry a scales so that you know you can trust and have some understanding of hallmarks. And you're nine-tenths of the way there. That's always that extra tenth that you look at an item and think, that's nice. And you're prepared to pay a little bit extra. Yes, but how do I persuade you to... Sell it to you. Sell it to me at that heavily discounted price. What um, works? What would press your button? Do I have to be nice? Do I have to smile? Do I send in a pretty girl? Do I, I mean, give us uh, what we're looking for are some tips and recommendations how to get the best price out of the dealer. Don't forget, it's the job of the dealer to get the best price he can. Yes. That's how he makes his living. Well, that's the battle. Okay. Yes, that is the battle. And if right. you are going to do battle with him, you, just as he, have to establish a trust relationship. Mm -hmm. If you come in on a regular basis and he can count on you, paying a fair price, he may well give you it slightly below spot price because he doesn't have to go through the rigmarole of vending it to his normal purchaser, bullion dealer or whatever. But if you want to build up that reputation, you've got to be able to buy every time you go to him, you've got to have enough money to buy what he wishes to sell you at a fair price. Mm. Turn it down by all means if you don't think it's a fair price. But you will know if you're buying what the spot price is. You will know when you're prepared to pay a little bit over that. And you will know, pretty rapidly learn, that they see their costs as possibly 5% of spot so that they will actually sell at below spot by 5% because they might as well get it from you in readies that don't go through the books as send it off where it is documented by a large bullion dealer. Okay, so I certainly hope you're not suggesting these bullion dealers do trades off the books, Greg. I, I would... Uh, no, but he may well immediately turn it into something else. Right. Now... On that basis then, point one, educate yourself. Point two, have some basic tools like an eyeglass and a, and a mini weighing scales. Point three, learn the various hallmarks and what the current price of gold and silver is. Point four, form a relationship 
with these people and buy from them, even if it's small initially, on a regular basis and be seen to be trustworthy. That's what you're basically saying, yes? Yes, and we, ha we have organisations in Britain, mm -hmm. uh, frequently called Cash Exchange or similar, which buy second-hand goods. They may or may not be licensed as pawnbrokers. They rarely display it, but most of them, when you go into them, you'll see for sale on their counter electronic scales that will cost you about £10 mm -hmm. for the cheaper ones. Um, the ones that will bear weighing items like coins in small numbers. If you intend to buy by the, the kilo, you're going to need something a little bit more specialist, but the little electronic ones will usually do up to about five ounces. Now, one of the things that I've done in the past is to go into the local dealer and really scan the shop as to what he's got there. And then over time, frequently revisit him or her. And if I discover that the, uh, the same items are still there after a period of time, then start to make an offer for those items. Because as you know, in retail, there are certain things you can afford to keep on the shelf if they are of specific value, but generally, most retailers just want turnover, don't they? Uh, that... Yes, but, but don't make the mistake some people make of treating the retailer as an idiot or desperate hmm. um, because you will burn off a retailer very quickly that way and you'll never establish a reputation with him and never establish trust and you're never going to get bargains from him. Okay, so... Basically, we've done all the things that you've said. The next question is, of course, what type of gold and silver items am I most likely to get at the lowest price? You mentioned scrap items. Can you give me a sort of pyramid of items and then those items which I'm least likely to get at a low price? Probably the simplest way to start is in buying pre-1946 British silver and in other countries coins that are of the date in that particular country where they stopped using silver and switched to nickel. You need to buy an old copy, uh, don't necessarily buy a new one, buy an old copy of something like Krauss coin catalogue. You don't want the modern price that will cost you £50 for the catalogue. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you're dealing in very large quantities. An old Krauss catalogue will show you, for instance, if every sovereign is listed and it's an old catalogue, it may be listed at £120. Sometimes you'll suddenly spot one that's £300. Mm. So you look closely and you'll find that that one happens to be from somewhere like the Perth Mint or have some quirk that is in the catalogue. And that difference of uh, three times the value, well, when the sovereign has risen to £300, the one with the higher value will be £900. So you don't need the modern catalogue. Pick up a cheap one. Thumb your way through it whenever you're, you have a bored moment until you start to get a feel for what is moving. You can buy, in some dealers, you can buy silver by the pound rather or by the kilo rather than by per coin, you'll pay a lower price because you're taking the good, the bad and the ugly. The dealer you're dealing with will permit you to check, not check the dates, but check that they are all pre the required date and contain silver. Start out in a small way, you'll find that most antique and junk shops have probably got a, a, a box somewhere around, a small box that they throw coins into, offer to buy them. You'll find that a lot of charity shops have a box of old coins. And if you call in on a regular basis and say, have you got any old coins? You'll probably find out after three visits of them saying, no, we, we haven't got any. They'll say, well, we got somebody who comes around once a month. And if you turn around and say, but I live just up the road, 
I can come in once a week if you want me to, to save you the problem of holding a value of coins on the premises. And that is the way to show them that you are genuine and that you will buy from them. Usually there is somebody who comes around probably about once a month, once every six weeks, and they check all the charity shops. There's no point in checking certain charity shops. You'll learn who they are, such as Oxfam, because all their coins go to a central office, their own central point, uh, just as all their books are checked to see if there's anything of any value there. And it's sent off to head office where it's sold, probably to pay for another visit of one of their executives to uh, a country overseas. So we start off with scrap. So we ask them if they've got any scrap. If they've got no scrap gold and silver, we then go to old coins, uh, just normal general currency coins. What's the next tier up from there, would you say? Because what we're trying to do is to buy it at the lowest price. Because if we go in and we buy a brand new sovereign or a brand new silver, one ounce silver coin, whether it be the silver dollar or whether it be a British silver coin or um, a Canadian one or an Australian one, we're going to pay the top price for those. So what are people more willing to sell you at that lower price? Um, broken items, broken jewellery, badly dented christening cups, items that are engraved and have engraving on them that isn't pertinent to anybody except the person it was given to. Flatware, for instance, that carries a family crest on it and the like. Uh, those are likely to sell for probably a little bit under scrap. A little bit over scrap. Otherwise, he'll sell it himself <laughs> to the scrap merchant. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, but you've, you've established a relationship. You're coming in regularly. Yeah. You may be able to buy at just under scrap right. because they have a cost in transporting to a bullion dealer. Okay. Fair enough. You can buy on a regular basis if you are as regular as clockwork and they can count on it. You can buy it below scrap because, uh, as I say, they have a cost. Yeah. And lastly, Greg, what should you avoid buying? Anything that was designed for the collector market. And give an example. Well, let's take it away from scrap metals, but medallions that are produced as collector's items. Franklin Mint, anything like that. Items that are purchased on a subscription basis. You get a new one once a month, sign up for the rest of your life, you know. In the ceramics industry, anything that is in a box, in a printed box, with a picture of the item that's inside it, you know damn well that it's going to be unsaleable. The amount of people who buy collector's plates and they have these proudly purchased these and you can go to auction you can see the stacks of 20 40 60 of them um, still in their original box well they were an investment weren't they and realistically they're no investment at all they're only an investment for the people who make the damn things <laughs> to market them and lastly then you mentioned auctions is it worth going to auctions to buy gold and silver generally? If you are prepared to realize that you will be paying a price one bid ahead of the underbidder. Now you have to assess the underbidders as to whether they are merely trying to buy the item has been missed by everybody else, can frequently buy a quantity of silver within a, a general lot of coins, um, many of which are possibly copper. But as long as you work it out that you're getting your silver, you may well find you get it actually below the silver scrap price because of the copper coins that are clouding people's judgment. But this is becomes a specialist market. I would seriously suggest that you don't go out and buy at your first, second or third auction. Go and learn the game. Work out who the bidders in that particular auction room are what they buy and you will start to find a niche in which you can comfortably sit and make a profit. Uh, the great mistake that the amateur or the enthusiast makes is going to an auction 
and not managing to get any of the lots they wanted and then ending up buying a couple of other items and paying way over the odds because they have this banal concept that to have gone to the auction and bought nothing is a completely wasted day. Mm. Well, to go to the auction and pay over the odds for something is completely <laughs> wasted money. Greg, we shall leave it there. Some wonderful pearls of wisdom, as always. Thank you very much. My pleasure and um, happy hunting. Thank you for listening. Do share your thoughts in the comment box below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of videos as and when they are published. Finally, just a reminder, we have also placed links to other videos that we have produced these past two weeks, which we deem to be of some quite considerable significance. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at illuminatisilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank <music> you.